Hello, hi guys. Today we are taking a very short uh, session to explain what is a quasi peak detector. So, if you look at um, the EMC test standards and its associated limits, uh, especially the emission uh, limit, what you find is often you find limit lines um, called QP, okay? You could also find limit lines that shows PK, okay? And sometimes as AVG, okay? So the average, uh, AVG stands for average, so it uh, is a limit for average results. And PK stands for peak, okay? So peak and average often are very easy to understand. Um, people often ask me, what is a QP, right? What's the purpose of having a QP uh, limit line? So if you search uh, uh, QP on the internet, it basically tells you it's a quasi-peak detector. It is a special detector that is different with average detector and peak detector, okay? So for example, this is the Google search results of quasi-peak detector. And you can see that basically it, is ha it has a special filter, okay? And basically ha can have a very fast charging time and very slow discharging time, right? Something like this, right? So it has a fast charging and very slow discharging. Therefore, the results uh, will be different. Uh, most of the time will be different with average and peak, okay? Um, but I haven't found any really good videos on YouTube to explain why do we need a quasi-peak, okay? So we understand how it works, but why? So this video is to demystify that, okay? Okay, so let's first find the uh, explanation in Henry Oates' uh, EMC book, okay? So it says quasi-peak detector, okay? It says, yeah, as I said, using a filter um, that has this special uh, detector and has a charge rate that's much faster than its discharge rate, okay? So pretty much as what we explained. But um, look here, it says a quasi-peak detector weighs and signals according to their pulse rate, okay, pulse repetition rates, which is a way of assessing the interference potential to AM radio. Okay, so really that's the purpose of having a quasi-peak detector, is to assess the interference potential to AM radio. So we know that AM radio operates in a very low frequency range, let's say uh, they have, you know, the short uh, wave or medium wave and long wave, roughly, let's say, one megahertz range. So really, uh, if you had a, uh, a radio, uh, I mean, the old traditional radio, the, um, yeah, and then if you tune to AM radio station, sometimes you can hear the pop sound, like a click and pop sound. And that is basically a very similar detector as the, um, uh, the quasi-peak detector. And yeah, the reason of having a quasi-peak detector is to try to represent that, okay? So yeah, let's have a look. And I'll do a quick demonstration here. Okay, so here's our radio and it's tuned into 1.6 megahertz range at the moment. I'm injecting noise using a uh, well, spark generator and this here, the sound. Now I'm changing to FM radio station and you can hear the difference. In FM you can't really hear that sound anymore. AM radio can also be used for detecting noise. So this can serve as a very, very cheap uh, troubleshooting tool. So in this case, let's just have a look. Now I'm going to switch on the light, okay, in the room, and then you will hear that's a difference between when the lights are switched off and when the lights are switched on. So as I said, this can be used for troubleshooting circuit.
This is just showing you the time domain analysis using a near field probe. 